Hi dear students, welcome to today's uh, Brainiac's capsule. So we are doing chapter solutions. We are discussing three important questions from this chapter today. Okay. So this is the second session on the chapter solutions. Okay. So yesterday I have told you that uh, uh, the molarity of a pure water, if you given any mass, its value will not change. So I am going to explain that with another important example you can see here. So the question here is the molarity of 720 gram of pure water. So here I have given a different mass for you. Last time we have tried with a thousand gram, correct? Now let's say with a, not with one liter, now with a 720 ml. Okay, let's see how to do this question. 720 gram pure water. So I told you the answer will not change. Again, my answer would be which one? 55.5 molar. It is independent of mass of the pure water. But let's see how that is coming. Okay. So here we know that molarity again is what actually? Molarity is weight in gram by molar mass divided by volume of the solution. Now in this question they have given you the mass of the solution or mass of the pure water 720 gram. Now we need to know 720 gram water will have what volume? Then only you can substitute here. So 720 volume how you can found, find out? You can see density is mass by volume. So what is volume? Volume I can say it is mass by density. So mass we already know that is 720 gram. I hope you all of you could see here actually. It is 720 gram. Okay. Density of the water I told you you need to remember this. There is no other go. Density of the water will not change that is 1 gram per ml. So what will happen? The gram and gram will get cancelled off. ml will come in the numerator and you will get that as 720 ml. Okay, now you can substitute here. You know the weight in gram is already 720. Molar mass of water is 18. And volume, volume it should be present in liters. We know the volume as 720 ml. So how will you convert that into liter? How will you do that? Divide by 1000. Okay, so what will happen? The 720, 720 cancels off. And 1000 will come in the numerator. And you will have 1000 by 18 again. So the answer is 55.5 molar. That's why I told if you put any weight, what will happen? The weight will become, for example, 500. Here it will become 500 and volume also will become 500 by 1000. That will get cancelled. So molarity of the pure water will never change depending upon the weight of the water or volume of water. Clear? I hope it is clear for you. So we have already marked the answer as 55.5 molar. Okay. Now let's go to the next important conceptual question. I hope you could see the question. The question given here is two bottles are there A and B and it contains one molar and one molal. This is molal M-O-L-A-L. One molar and one molal aqua solution. Okay. And they have shown uh, they have given here the density of both is one gram per ml. Okay. So the density remains the same. Of sulfuric acid, both of them containing sulfuric acid, but one, one is one molar and other is one molar. Now they are asking you, the question here is option A, A is more concentrated than B. Second one is B is more concentrated than A. Concentration of A is equal to concentration of B. It is not possible to compare the concentration. So fundamentally what is concentration means? Very simple. We can write concentration as what actually? Concentration is equal to number of moles of the solute divided by volume of the solution. We know this. So concentration increases means what? The number of moles of the solute should increase. This is the fundamental you should know. Okay. So I am writing that here for those students who doesn't know. So concentration is represented in a square bracket. Okay, so let's say concentration of A or B, whatever it is, it is nothing but number of moles of the solute, okay, divided by, divided by volume of the solution. So tell me if the concentration needs to increase, what should happen? The number of moles of the solute should also increase because it is on the numerator and they are directly proportional. It is directly proportional. Okay, I hope it is clear for you the concept. Now, now, now you need to think little logical. Okay, now let me explain that. A one molar aqua solution 
will be surely more concentrated than one molar aqueous solution. Why? Because a one molar solution, if you see, it contains one mole of the solute in one liter solution. That means you are taking a, this is a tumbler. I can say this is a one liter tumbler. And this contains solute and solvent. Together, if you take, it is one liter. Understood? Now, so I can say, which include both solute and solvent. Now, if you think logically, I can say, so the mass of the solvent will be less than 1000 gram. Correct? So I can easily say in a one liter solution, some mass will be solute and some mass will be solvent. Some mass will be solvent. So I can say mass of the solvent will be less than 1000 gram. Why? Because the total volume is only one liter. Out of that, some mass will be surely of solute. So I can easily say that the mass of the solvent is total volume of the solution minus mass of the solute. So I can easily say here mass of the solvent is less than 1000 gram. Okay, clear. Now in a one molar solution. Now if you see here in a one molar solution what is happening? Can anybody tell? So I can write it here stating that in a one molar solution. One minute. In a one molar solution, what will happen? I can easily say mo molality m is nothing but number of moles of the solute, number of so moles of the solute by mass of the solvent, mass of the solvent. This is the formula. And how will you define a one molar solution? This means one molar solution means one mole of the solute, one mole of the solute okay present in tell me present in thousand kg of the solvent okay so one molar solution means one mole of the solute is present in thousand kg of the solvent now you tell me sir in which of the following has uh, and one molar means what that also if you write it it is very easy to then uh, you can say why uh, i am telling one molar is more concentrated so if it is one molar means how the formula looks capital m is equal to number of moles of the solute this is a formula okay number of moles of the solute by volume of the solution or how you define one molar one molar means one mole of the solute one mole here also one mole solute is present okay present in please see that is what is important one liter solution it is not solvent now one liter solution will have what mass since here density remains the same let me say that may have a mass of let me say thousand but here i can say it is solution so that means some more some of that uh, in thousand kg solution some are some some mass will be of that of solute. So if you see it generally, which of them have maximum amount of solvent? Solvent is high in here, in molality. So as you know, when the solvent ratio is high, solvent ratio or volume is high, what will happen? The concentration decreases. So I can say that even though both contains number of moles of the solute as one, but the denominator is high for molality. If the denominator becomes high, automatically I can say the concentration decreases. That is the reason why we say where one molar solution is more concentrated than one molar solution. So I can say my answer here is option one. Okay. So or simply I can say one simple statement. This means solute to solvent ratio. Solute to solvent ratio is high in a one molar solution than one molar solution. This is the fundamental. Clear? So if you take the concentration wise, the solvent mass is high in a one molar solution but in a one molar solution the solvent mass is little less if the solvent mass is less what will happen we know that here the denominator if it is decreasing denominator decreases automatically concentration increases clear i hope you understood the concept okay so my answer here is one molar and one molar aqueous solution both are having same density means A would be more concentrated than B because it is a one molar solution. Clear? Now let's go to the next conceptual question. Okay. The question here is equal weight of NaCl 
and KCl. They are dissolved. They are dissolved separately in equal volumes of solution. Okay, so you have one solution with the NaCl as the solute and another solution with the KCl as the solute. Now you are dissolving that in equal volume of solutions. So that means solute plus solvent you have maybe one having one liter means the other solution is also one liter. Now they are asking molarity of the two solutions will be. They are asking you know, what is the nature of molarity whether both of them will be equal or molarity of NaCl will be high or low like that. So how can you compare this? So we know the fundamental formula molarity is nothing but weight in gram by molar mass by volume of the solution. Now in this question they are telling equal weight of NaCl and KCl are dissolved. That means if you are comparing weight of the gram for both of the case remains the same and volume of the solution also remains the same. So we I can say molarity here depends only on molar mass. Because these two are same means they will get cancelled off. So I can say molarity if you are looking at the formula I can say molarity is inversely proportional because it is inversely proportional to molar mass of the solute. That means if a compound if a solute has higher molar mass then its molarity would be less. If a compound has lower molar mass molar mass is low means that molarity would be high. Now if you compare the different solute NaCl and KCl I can easily say potassium has a higher molar um, atomic weight so surely the molar mass of KCl would be high. If KCl has a higher molar mass that means its corresponding molarity of that solution would be less. So I can say that the NaCl will be of more uh, it is having more molarity than that of KCl solution correct. Uh, so my answer here would be option 3 would be my correct answer. Hope you are understanding. So whenever you are comparing two solutions that are having equal weight and equal volume of the solution then the molarity depends upon molar mass of the solute. If the molar mass of the solute is high then the molarity is less. If the molar mass of the solute is less then the molarity would be high. Clear? I hope you clear it. I hope it is clear for you. Okay. Yeah, so um, uh, uh, we have discussed the three important questions from this chapter. So tomorrow also we will continue with this chapter and come up with three important sums for tomorrow. Okay, so stay tuned to the channel and if you have missed out some of our classes, feel free to go to our playlist and watch it. If you feel it is worth, you can subscribe the channel. Thank you.